Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Afrada Live, and today we're doing some brawling, some historic brawling. So I've kind of been addicted to this format for the last few months, so like once a month-ish, we've been doing a brawl video, and today I got an egg I'm super excited to show off for y'all. We're playing Aster Bear of Blades, one of my favorite new legends from Dominar United, and this is kind of historic brawl hammer time uh it is an equipment deck it is actually like straight up a colossus hammer hammer time deck but it's also a vehicle deck aster cares about vehicles and equipment when it etbs you can grab an equipment or vehicle from your top seven then you can equip for one and you can crew vehicles for one so basically we got a good mixture of powerful vehicles sky sovereigns and barhelians and surge hacker mechs and cultivator caravans and heart of kirans and unlicensers and bank busters and a bunch of sweet equipment colossus hammer is the most exciting its equip cost is so high but with aster we can equip it for one and just smash people we got shadows fears and a helm of the host is another really sweet one with aster cheating on that equip cost and making copies of things is really fun so that's basically the plan of the deck is play aster play vehicles play equipment draw cards with things like sram maybe ramp a little bit with magda since we can tap it to our vehicles to make treasure tokens and that's basically the plan play vehicles and smash our opponent to death so not a ton to say about the deck like that's really the main goal although i did want to mention my favorite part of this deck and it's a hundred card singleton deck so who knows how often we'll see these cards but my favorite part of this deck is the glorious part of the deck a chance for glory which i just lost oh why is it putting it way down there okay well anyway chance for glory and uh and glorious end glorious end and chance for glory are essentially three mana extra turn spells that work in boros Except they come with the downside that you lose the game on the beginning of that extra turn then step. But Chance for Glory just literally an extra turn, and then you can cast instant speed. Glorious End ends the turn, but if we cast it on our opponent's upkeep, it'll essentially skip their turn, go back to our turn. So these cards are usually really hard to play, and uh, we're not really built to try to survive them. The main way you see these cards you play is like with Gideons and so forth, to try to like minimize the drawback of losing the game, get around that with you can't lose the game effects. We do have Cloudsteel Kirin, which we can cheat on the equip cost with aster which is a way to survive but really we're playing these cards fairly with the idea being we like aster and get some vehicles and get a hammer on something and smash you for a bunch and then we're like all right extra turn like kill you during the extra turn and trust that nothing goes wrong and we just win with combat damage before we ever get to the next end step same with glory Z. so those are some of my favorite cards in the deck otherwise i mean it's just sweet aster stuff with vehicles and equipment so anyway i'm gonna stop rambling the deck is sweet if you like hammer time if you like historic brawl if you like asters if you like vehicles and equipment this is probably the perfect deck for you so let's jump into some games see what sweet things we can do with aster bear of blades it is Doric Brawl. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And oh yeah, if you need some of these cards for paper magic, maybe you want to build Aster and Commander, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. So anyway, let's jump into the games. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. It is Historic Brawl Day. It's been a while. It's been, been more than a month since we've done some Brawl. Yeah, we got a sweet one today. We're playing some Boros Aster Glorious vehicles it's it's some sweet boros shenanigans with aster leading the way this hand oh well okay i mean we would like a land but considering aster lets us cheat the equip on that i think we gotta keep it hopefully we draw land after that would be the best so we do get celestis opponent starting off aggro well play the land and yeah we're not gonna let our opponent draw with this hammer for no reason about it yeah it's, it hits us down to 24 well play the land play as alice does opponent gets to draw play colossal hammer past the turn e valving wilds cracks it i mean so now we probably urabrask first urabrask and then go from there opponent hits us oh we get to loot that's sweet discard yeah we're probably not gonna use the in this game. So play the land, Urbrosk. Hit you for four. Opponent exiles Darien. So they probably are gonna play Darien or else they lose it. Yeah, there's a Darien. Forest. I mean, but we get to Aster equip. 
if we want to. And we get an Urbras guard. Opponent needs like one mana, one mana artifact removal here. Or they're taking a smashing, literally. Ooh, Shandra Skull smashing. Play Aster. Go digging. Take Sky Sovereign. Equip the hammer. Tap land. Uh, 14, yeah? How do you feel about a little hammer into the face, opponent? <laughs> All right, opponent exiles a land. Okay. Well, it's a. Wow, they don't play the exiled land. Banishing light. I mean, they gotta hit the hammer, right? Yeah, they hit the hammer. This is still kind of bad for our opponent, though. Because we can just sky sovereign something. All right, what do we what do we get? All right, we get a land. Well, all right, Bonder's Enclave. Sky Sovereign. Opponent gets to draw. Shoot the Darien. Rabbit Battery. Crew. Equip. Win. Shoot down the Esper Sentinel just for funsies. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good one. That was that was a pretty good example of why Aster is sweet. We got to dig for our vehicles and equipment. We got to equip on the cheap, especially the Colossus Hammer. Like our opponent did find the answer, but that one hit with the Colossus Hammer was so much a 14 to our opponent. That was more than half of their life total. Like that one hit allowed us to do the Sky Sovereign play and win. Not, not bad, not bad. Aster, sweet, sweet. Historic Brawl time. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been more than a month since we've Historic Brawled, and the format's pretty sweet. So uh, we're playing a really interesting deck. We're playing some Aster Historic Brawl, although I will admit, a little nervous about Joda. Joda's one of the, one of the scariest commanders. All right, Cold Steel Heart, get the ramp going. Plaza of Harmony and Arcane Signet. Now play the land, run out Aster. Interesting. Twice the number of vehicles you control. Uh, the question, is there a way? Oh, we can play this as an equipment. That doesn't help. Trying to figure out if there's a way we can kill this Joda in two turns. Well, let's take Sky Sovereign. The way might be Sky Sovereign attack with it, plus Sir Checker Mech. We really gotta try not to let our opponent untap with Joda though. That would be pretty bad news. Yeah, Joda can just go off. We do have some sweepers in the deck, so it's possible that we find one eventually. Liliana. All right, gonna take down to get rid of the Aster. Well, yeah. We get Aster back. This is bad, this is real bad. Actually, I guess this is fine. So we play the land, we Sky Sovereign. Get rid of the Liliana. So next turn we can double vehicle to kill the Joda and then go from there. Oh, all right, Relic of Legend. So no Joda yet. Well, in that case, let's play Command Tower, play Bank Buster. Channel Born to Drive. Crew. Hit you for six. Pass a turn. I mean, we're playing this entire game based on making sure we can kill Joda the turn it comes down. That's, that has been every decision that we have made. Wow, opponent's just gonna pass, interesting. Not going for it, okay. Sajiri Shelter. So opponent is apparently trying to wait until they can play something right away with the Joda, or so it seems. Well, let's equip Sky Sovereign. Yeah, let's go attacking, see what our opponent does. They might be leaving up removal. All right, go to combat. Wandering Emperor, okay. Well, now we probably just Sajiri Shelter, I think. Sajiri Shelter, pro white. Hitchia. Wow, and that's enough, that's enough. MDFC, MDFC. <laughs> Oh, you love to see it. You love to see the MDFC win. I've been preaching this for more than a year now. MDFCs are so good. <laughs> Play them more. I don't care how many you're playing, add more. Add more to your deck. They're lands that randomly win you games. Like, that was a land. It's a tap land, sure, but it's a land that just accidentally won us that game by letting us fight through removal and keeping our opponent from ever getting the Jota down. I'm honestly a little surprised our opponent didn't go. Sounds interesting. We got the hammer and the aster and a bunch of ramp. Well, we'll see. Opponent's on Shauna, which I am a little scared of. Just because we know Shauna can uh, 
kind of go off and draw a ton of cards. Well, land and fighter class. What equipment do we want? Mirror shield to protect Aster would be sweet. Citizen's crowbar to kill a mana rock could be sweet. Ember cleave just went. Oh, we got to go Ember cleave, right? Yeah, we got to go Ember cleave. It's hard to pass up Ember cleave because Aster hammer Ember cleave probably just makes our opponent die. Ooh, Reckless Crew is spicy. I'll play the land. Salistus. Colossus hammer. I mean, we are setting up for the SmackDown at some point. Opponent, land, passes. We get to loot. We will discard Cleansing Nova. I'll play the tap land. Relic of Legends. Pass the turn. Island for our opponent. Wow, still have not found the green mana. How worried are we about this getting countered? I mean, I guess it's not the end of the world. Eh, that's Aster. I mean, we ramped enough that we can cast it twice, even with the command tax. All right, Tails End, sure. Back to the command zone with you. Play the land pass the turn. Wow, more blue mana for our opponent. And passes. Now let's level up and guardian idol. Pass the turn. So I guess maybe our opponent's actually a control deck? Or maybe Tails End is just a staple. That could also be. Like, hitting a legend does mean it gets any commander for two mana. Uh, opponents still having their mana issues. Unlicensed Hearse. Hearse isn't bad. Yeah, let's play the Hearse. Okay, so opponent is trying to be a control deck. And Aster again? All right, this time it resolves. Oh, that's a Helm of the Host. Okay, we can tap Aster to equip Hammer. And all right, opponent, you gotta draw something, friend. You gotta draw something. And this triggers Celestis. We get to loot. We will discard, I guess, Colossal Plow at this point. I mean, opponent needs something. Elspeth conquers death. All right, so that does keep our opponent temporarily alive. Back to the command zone. Right now, we only have one equipment. That's awkward. Okay, well, Aster. I mean, I guess we're just gonna make our opponent keep killing our stuff. Lizard Blades. Play the land. Equip to Aster. Pass the turn. Can you kill it again? Picks up Elspeth Conqueror's death. Land. Wow. Okay, land. Passes. We get to loot. So I assume this means our opponent has instant speed something. What are we discarding? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, discard the Mech Titan Core, I guess. Ooh, to Fairies Pro. That's gonna be good eventually. Well, I mean, go to combat, attack ya. Fading Hope bounces Aster. Back to hand. Well, we will replay Aster. Go digging. Whiff. Lizard Blade. Pass the turn. Loot. Discard the land. Elspeth Conqueror's death goes away. And a, wow. Okay. Well, I mean, we didn't actually do anything that exciting, I guess, but our opponent was on the control deck and they kept countering and killing our stuff and just recasting Esther was enough. Oh, Esther's just, oh, it's a sweet card. It's a sweet, ooh, Wandering Emperor. Do not see that many Planeswalkers as commanders. Actually, Brawl is one of the formats that makes me think Planeswalkers as commanders would be fine in actual commander because you just, we never really see them. They're pretty infrequent, even in Brawl where they are perfectly legal. You just don't play against them that much. Well, let's get a ramp on. Oh, I was a little worried about a mana tithe there. That would have been brutal. Plays a land. Puts a random creature card with lesser mana value from the hand on the, okay. So a little, a little alchemy, but we get a rabbit battery, which is kind of sweet. Now play the land, hit you for one. Mirror shield. Go. Heliod's intervention. Huh. Annoying. Well, Aster. So opponent's got a lot of ways to blow up artifacts and enchantments. That much they have made clear. Opponent plays a land. And Ayo! Well, alright. Unlicensed Terse. Lion Sash. 
Wandering Emperor is kind of an annoying commander because it means, it means we can't really attack or else they just snipe our things. We need Vigilance somehow. Borrowed time. Going after Asters. Well, all right. Let's start growing unlicensers. I mean, I guess eventually we're gonna get to this farewell, probably. I wonder if there's an argument to leaving Asters in hopes of drawing lands and farewelling. Well, we do draw land. I'll play Nettle Cyst. Play the land as the turn. Gonna hit us for a bunch. So I guess our opponent's like kind of a control deck as well. Not like the last deck we played that was all counters, but whew, lots of removal, so much interaction. Also just like a kind of over the top amount of artifact and enchantment, hey, golly, golly. Well, um, I guess we exile our graveyard to keep this hearse growing. Well, there is the land. Oh, we could ask her, but I feel like we might have to fare well at some point just to not be dead. Well, let's play Aster. Oh God, they do have mana tithe. <laughs> All right, so our opponent is like the controlliest deck imaginable. <laughs> well, fair. Fair enough, Photo plays a land. Goes to combat. We do need to stop this AO at some point or we are going to die to it. Opponent hits us. Down to 10, looking at their lands. Passing, well, exile and exile. Helm of the Host. Not as good at the moment. We have a ton of cards, but they just don't do much. We can't Aster. If we fare well, our opponent's just gonna Wandering Emperor and start doing that, but maybe that's what we gotta do. Yeah, all right, farewell. Exile all creatures. Get rid of the AO. Holy removal. All right, so opponent gets to flash in Wandering Emperor, do that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes it down for a token. Untaps. Plays a land. Basri's Lieutenant. Oh, that's also pretty bad. Does this mean we're dead? Ticks up, ticks up. So we take four. Yeah, I think this means we're dead now. We can Sky Sovereign, but then we can't crew. All right. Oh, that was unfortunate. <laughs> Our opponent just had a handful of control stuff and it was, uh, it was enough, it was enough. More specifically, they just had a ridiculous amount of artifact and enchantment hate, which I guess maybe like if you're mono white, you just end up that direction. But yeah, that was, that was brutal. We just could not get anything going. Funnel just killed literally everything. Well, this is a little sketchy because we don't have white mana and we got a bunch of white cards. Hopefully we draw a white Zors or else uh, we might not be doing any astering here. Uh, but on it, land. So I assume our opponent's like mono green, ramp slash stompy. There's white mana, that's good. All right, so land and guardian idol. Well, with a white source, this hand's kind of sweet. We still want to hit more lands, but at least we can cast Aster now. We need Teferi's Pro at some point if we need to. Opponent, tab land, and passes well play the land aster go digging well i mean colossal plow can make a lot of white mana take the plow pray for a land opponent your bow oh that is spicy um well uh colossal hammer and equip it for one hit you for 14 opponent takes it all right, well, we might as well go plowing. We don't want mana to do anything else. All right, well, fight spells should be offline, although green probably can fill, uh, kill artifacts. That's one of the things green's good at. If they can't, then this Aster's kind of the abyss, and our opponent's gonna have to do a lot of jump blocking. Hammer time is Toric Brawl style. Aster's so perfect for it. All right, opponent, what do you say? Can you beat a 14-14? All right, Orky Jelly. Gets, wow, staying aggro gets and hits us. So this lets our opponent chump block. They have to block here. All right, one, two, oh wait. So this is like a flying, so this takes away flying. Oh no, I don't know if this works or not. Um, Is this a layers thing? Is this a layers thing or does this work the way we want it to? I mean, we're gonna try to find out. It says flying, is it really flying? 
Oh, it really is. Okay, layers. <laughs> layers for the win. So what happened there? I, w I was not 100% sure how this works, but basically, whenever you get stuck thinking about layers, for me, here's how I like to think about it. I like the, what made me learn this was Blood Moon and Modern versus Dry to the Hills and Grove. So. <laughs> If you're a Blood Moon player, which uh, of course I am, you play your Blood Moon, you think you got your opponent, and then your opponent plays Dryad of the Ilsing Grove, it basically trumps your Blood Moon, and your opponent's lands tap for all man of any color and all that horrible stuff, and you lose the game to a Primeval Titan, and it's very sad. On the other hand, if your opponent plays Dryad of the Ilsing Grove, and then you Blood Moon, since your Blood Moon came into play last, it trumps the Dryad, and your opponent has no functional mana, and everything's a mountain, and you win the game, I think that's what's happening here. So I'm pretty sure that what's gonna decide if our Esther is flying or not is what was equipped last. So if we first Cloud Steel Kieran and then Colossus Hammer, the lose flying would have come after the gain flying and we would not have flying. But then Securin came on after the hammer, the gains flying undoes the lose flying and we swing in for lethal. Hammer time. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was sweet. That was super sweet. I kind of love this deck. Aster is a really fun deck to play. So many people in Historic Brawl, if you play Historic Brawl, people love their like value Simic decks, which I guess makes sense. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Commander. You got a lot of those people that are just trying to ramp and girdle with Simic and apparently a lot of mono white players, uh, but you can do some sweet things with Boros as we're seeing now. Hello, friend. Uh, well, let's start with the tapped land, Sejuri Shelter. Former All-Star like a few games ago. Sarah Ascendant. Well, thankfully we have a Swords to Plowshares. Um, yeah, let's just play the tap land. Probably just gonna Swords this. Like, it's gonna have to go eventually. Although, hmm, maybe we don't have to. Uh, the question is, can we get to this mech before our opponent gains enough life to turn this on? All right, we're just gonna do, we're gonna do the safe thing. There is a chance it could work out, but there's a chance it could go wrong. And if it goes wrong in that scenario, we basically just straight up lose. <laughs> like if they make that into a 6-6, six, six, we, we're gonna be waiting until we find a Wrath or something for anything good to happen. Hopefully this is still a 2-2 two -two and we can mech it. That would be the best. Okay, runs out Heliod, sure. Well, this is great. Cause now we just get to Surge Hacker mech. Surge Hacker mech, kill the pride mate. Keep the board clear. Hitch it for three. Draw zero. Okay. And then Aster can come down and turn on the mech if we want to. Opponent. I guess we could also try to draw with Depala, but Depala's draw is kind of a option of last resort. We're not really built around. I mean, we do have a decent amount of vehicles. We have a lot of vehicles, but we don't really have a lot of dwarves. Cosmos Elixir. Gains some life. Gets to scry to the top. Grows the Heliod. Well, I mean, I think we gotta try to get our opponent lower on life, so we're gonna Aster. Get a Caravan. Crew. Hitch ya. Yeah, I think we'd rather just get down Bacillus Collar. Hit you to 16, play the Collar. We're not that far away from trying to Mech Titan Core. I guess that's an upside of activating Paula if we got nothing else to do. The surprise Mech Titan Voltron kill would be sweet. Opponent Crawling Barons. Always worried about Farewell against Mono White. Farewell's pretty good against a deck like ours that's trying to keep a bunch of vehicles sitting on the battlefield. Whoa! Aster 2 busted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I will say, I almost wish, I, I wonder what you think about this chat slash YouTube since this isn't Twitch, but I'm curious. What do you think about having like a ranked historic brawl queue or historic brawl with some sort of entry fee? Not replacing the free queue. I, I don't want, I mean, I want everyone to be able to play brawl for free. But one thing I've noticed since I've started to become a bit of a historic brawl player is you do get a lot of, a lot of early scoops. There's a lot of, a lot of people who just scoop it up on, on like turn three, if they don't get a good draw. I wonder if there's some way to structure an event to disincentivize that, oh boy. 
What is this alchemy card? Niambi Beloved Protector, 2 mana 2 2 flash, human cleric, ETBs, choose a non legendary creature card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn, return it to the battlefield that per perpetually gains when it becomes the target of a spell or ability to draw a card, triggers only once each turn. My god. Well, that is a reasonably high amount of text. Yeah, I guess we just Alpine Meadow Go. So we are going to want at least one more land. Ramp spell would also be pretty good. We'll see. So opponent, probably Azorius Reanimator, but being Azorius, eh, it's a land. Being Azorius, they probably also have a, a decent amount of counters and whatnot. Yeah, let's run out Lion Sash. Lion Sash actually probably seems pretty good against Niambi if our opponent's trying to reanimate. Also, how did, how did Niambi have a, is that a baby lion? How is that possible? down to 24 spike field cave and yeah i guess we just magda see if we can get some treasure production going opponent island and elite spellbinder all right i assume they hit the showdown of the skulls here but we will find out wow all right i mean that's also fine uh well in that case play the land play aster go digging whiff sadly blainer's a weird choice just because aster does the same thing from the command zone so it's hard for me to see the upside of hard for me to see the upside of uh of taking the blainer there it's just like bad aster so we we're gonna have this effect either way seems like taking the card draw would be most beneficial opponent's going to foretell well i mean uh how are we feeling about a colossus hammer opponent Wow, let's it go. Um, equip it for a single mana to Magda and go to combat and attack you a bunch and make a treasure. And opponent, gonna chump. I'll play the tap land and do we want the Peace Walker Colossus? Probably not. Yeah, let's just pass. We want to leave up Lion Sash. Opponent runs out Niambi, pretty much just a two do. Lion Slash doing some uh, serious work there. Opponent, cryptic cave. I wonder what they foretold. Oh, well now we know, it's a doom scar. All right, we get our stuff back. Opponent passes. So opponent could have counters. Wait, did they leave? Ha, huh, they left Niambi in the graveyard. So opponent's definitely planning on reanimating. Yeah, let's, let's show down, see if they got a counter. All right, that resolves. So we get to draw four temporarily. Tap land. Rabbit battery. Hit ya. Well, we should be able to play all the all the cards we exiled, which is good. Land for our opponent. Conquerors Galleon. Counter on the rabbit battery. All right, opponent's gonna make a ton of treasures. That's scary. Uh, Velcid Awakening, Colossus. Grow the rabbit battery. Well, because of that spell's window, opponent has a ton of mana and their reanimator deck. So this could mean that they just have something huge. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, that's fine. Our opponent spent all their treasures to draw a card and get back Niambi, which I am kind of okay with on an empty graveyard. Opponent plays the land. Amiria's call. The problem is this is indestructible, so we're not getting in damage no matter what. All right, let's Aster. Go digging. Get a counter on the rabbit battery. Bacillus Collar is nice. Get Bacillus Collar. Play it to get lifelink. Counter on the rabbit battery. Play the land. Equip the hammer. Equip the collar. And uh, gain just a tiny bit of life here. I mean, opponent does get a free block, but we get to gain 15. So opponent blocks with the zombie. Sure, sure, sure. See, MDFC power. Opponent's got the MDFC power thanks to uh, that Amiria's call. Keeping him alive. Gets in with the angels. Sure. Down to 32. Time wipe to sweep the board. The obnoxiousness continues. Aster back to the command zone. 
Pona needs something though, right? Aren't they at risk of dying here? Because we get to Blainar. Crew the Colossus. Wait, don't we get to... Oh, all right, we got to use Blainer's ability. Equip the hammer. And opponent! <laughs> through the rest through the rest doesn't even matter well if you like equipment shenanigans and you like hammer time but you don't want to play on magic online historic brawl seems like uh <laughs> the good place to bring aster's hammer down on unsuspecting opponents Ooh, chatter fang spicy oh speaking of non-historic brawl formats i've really come around and we'll see We'll see if this stays true. I really come around and I'm liking to play a single farewell in the main deck of standard decks that have white mana. It's such a like hilarious, even in decks that probably shouldn't play farewell, it's just such a hilarious blowout and people don't suspect it so they don't play around it. It's a nice like get out of jail free style card. So uh, yeah, I don't know. If you're playing standard, keep that in mind. Farewell, just as a one of like mys can actually be pretty, pretty sweet. Opponent plays a land, well tap land. Go. Uh, opponent. Land and arcane signet. Well, I guess we're just playing tap lands. Yes, Lard and Vale. Really don't want to chaos warp this chanter fang. Risque. Opponent plays on land. I mean, I guess hopefully we can just let him go off and then farewell. Play the land. We could play this in attack. Probably better next turn. Yeah, let's Relic of Legends. Lelia is kind of better if you can uh, play the land. If you still have a land drop for the turn. So I think we'd rather try to do this next turn where we attack before we play our land. And then if we hit a land, we can play it. Also, Relic of Legends is kind of absurd. Going back to the three mana mana rock debate, Relic of Legends is definitely a three mana mana rock that is more than worth playing in your commander decks and your historic brawl decks. I think uh, it's definitely good in legendary tribal, but there's so many legends these days. I think that it's just good enough to play in most decks. If you're like have an abnormally low number of legends, then yeah, then it's not worth it. But in general, I think it is worth it to to play the Relic of Legend. All right, opponent going off a of Chatterfang, getting in hitting us, sure, sure, sure. Maybe we can set up farewell on creatures and enchantments. I think that's the hope. Yeah, let's run it out. Go attack it and see what we hit. A land, please? I mean, if opponent wants to kill it, it's fine. At this point, we're pretty much just playing for farewell and then we'll get, we'll go from there. Once we reset, we'll, we'll try to figure things out. Ooh, that's actually not the worst. If we're not gonna hit a land, something we can cast is actually pretty nice, opponent. Gonna do a little blocking, sure, sure, sure. We get drained, well, Colossus Hammer. Den of the Bugbear. Drake Keeper makes a million squirrels, can pump squirrels. We get smacked. Is there any chance we can win this fairly without the farewell? Like, what if we just asked her a quip? Well, we probably get a farewell, don't we? All right, well, go to combat. We might as well get in and draw a card or potentially draw a card. Yeah, let's go attacking. We could hit a land, but I think we are farewelling here. <laughs> Tybalt's triggery. Okay, well, that's, I guess, fine. We don't especially want to draw that. Well, see, if our opponent blocks a bunch. All right, they're just gonna chomp, sure. All right, well, in that case, we'll leave the artifacts, play the land, farewell, creatures, enchantments. Put an end to these squirrel shenanigans. So you can attack four squirrels and get four bastion triggers. I mean, that's something. I mean, hopefully, since we get to keep our artifacts, oh, five squirrels, because they can attack Chatterfang. All right, I mean, that's a lot of bastion triggers. Hopefully, since we get to keep our artifacts, Aster Hammer will carry us here. We are down to 11. Could use a life lifelink equipment. That would be nice. Little uh, Shadow Sphere action, perhaps. Sadly, if our opponent, one, two, I guess if they run out Chatterfang, we can kill it, can't we? Unlicensers plus Mac. Fiend Artisan. And opponent passes. Well, play the tap land. Actually, let's just Mac first. Make sure the Fiend Artisan dies. So snipe that. Yeah, play on Licensed Hers. Amiria's Call tapped. 
All right, your go opponent. Also gotta be careful of this Lair of the Hydra. Some sneaky damage sitting on the battlefield. I mean, we can get down Asters next turn and see what happens. And the Chaos Warp is nice. Like that is our, oh my God, we're about to die card. All right, opponent, Symbiosis. Is it Chatterfang time? Inquisition, well, there goes our Chaos Warp, I assume. So take the Chaos Warp and then play Chatterfang. Wow, takes them all, interesting. Was not expecting that. I guess maybe people aren't scared to Chaos Warp. I mean, I guess we could spin them into something better. All right, so there is the Chatterfang. Well, exile the graveyard. Well, come on, Asters, give us something good. We draw land. Now play Aster, go digging. Get a Cloud Steel Kirin. Crew the mech. Hammer the mech. Hit you for 15. All right, and if something bad is about to happen, we can, we can Chaos Warp and trust that the magic gods will be kind. I mean, we actually don't really mind Esther's dying that much here. Sure. Oh, wow. And that puts our opponent to 15, which is a scary life total for our opponent with a mech and a hammer. Is our opponent dead here? I believe so. I think our opponent just killed themselves without realizing it. Uh, sure, we will take the beads down to six. Don't we, isn't this just game? We untap. We play Aster. We get a Embercleave. We crew the mech. Yeah, opponent just exact seed themselves. <laughs> yeah, that's a 15-15. That's a opponent, the murderous rider put him to 15, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Got him! That's Asters. The deck's sweet. We did lose once to that mono white deck, but the deck's fun. It's unique. It's I have not seen anyone else playing Asters. I'm sure someone is, but it's not a common commander. It's not like Prosper, something you see all the time, which I think is a good thing. I think that means you hopefully won't play against like the Golos tier all the time and you'll get more diverse matchups, but I don't know. I would recommend it. If you like Hammer Time in other formats, you like doing sweet synergies. My only disappointment, let's go back to the deck list real quick. And this is, this is our little wrap up. My only disappointment is there is a really cool synergy in the deck that we, we just didn't really see. And that happens in Commander uh, or in Historic Brawl where you get a hundred card singleton deck. But the cool thing that we didn't get to see is is, uh, is the Glorious cards. Glorious End and Chance for Glory, the, the Boros extra turn spells. So they're super risky. Uh, Chance for Glory just literally makes your stuff indestructible extra turn, you die at the next end step. Glorious End is essentially an extra turn spell. You cast it at instant speed on your opponent's turn to end the turn, and then uh, it goes back to your turn and then you die in the end step. These cards are really cute, I think, in this deck in specific, because as you saw there, like Asters plus Hammers, we're hitting for a huge chunk of damage so the theory is we can have a situation like we had there where except with our opponent being at like 25 life for full life total and we can like aster put a hammer on something hit you and then just chance for glory sure we're gonna die but we just hit you one more time during the extra turn and win the game so that was a that was the only disappointment i think of our matches with this deck is we really didn't get to see the shenanigans there but they are really cool so keep that in mind those are some of my favorite cards in the deck they're not always good but when they are good, they're so good. And they just steal wins out of nowhere. No one expects them. Uh, otherwise, not really any alchemy cards. We do have rebalanced Boiner, but I don't even remember what they rebalance. I think it's got an extra toughness, maybe. The original might have been a 5-3. But uh, no alchemy cards. There are some alchemy cards, if, uh, if that's your jam, that care about equipments that you could add. But really... I mean, Asters is sweet. So if you're looking for something different to go brawling with, I would recommend some Asters action. The deck is fun. It can win some games. It does cool things. So that's Asters in Historic Brawl. Historic Brawl Hammer Time. That's been our video for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.